to mute your mics, so we don't have uh, weird noises. So don't forget to join the, the Discord live stream also. And uh, if everyone is ready, uh, we are we are going to start. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so hello everyone. I I will start uh, by shortly introducing myself. My name is Julian, and I'm a master student in ecological engineering. This presentation this presentation has less to do with my uh, with my curriculum and more with my personal interest. It's about a, a passion of mine. So um, about BioCord, I've been somewhat active on this server for some times. Before, uh, I had already done a short uh, entomology course back in uh, in May, I think, and the link are pinned somewhere. I could, uh, I will uh, give you the link if you are interested. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so sorry for the maybe if you have trouble understanding me because I probably have a maybe a big French accent, but uh, it should be fine. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in, uh, the, in the channel lecture conferences. And uh, about this presentation, no? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Frogs. So this presentation will give you an overview of a very specific subject, as you can see. It's about a subdivision of zoology, which uh, is interested only about uh, the arachnids. So this will only be about spiders and their relative. If anyone is arachnophobic, don't worry, I will give you a warning and some uh, indications. So we will go over um, not too much details. But, uh, we will be uh, quite, uh, it will be an overview, but we will go over every arachnids that we know of, even the extinct orders. So it's also quite complete. And uh, finally, uh, for this introduction, thank you for being here. Uh, because I uh, I love this server and I love doing this kind of uh, presentation, and uh, thank you for uh, my friends, which I know uh, there are quite a few of them uh, already uh, here, and now for the organization of this talk. So as you can see, it will be in two parts. Uh, we will have uh, part one, which is an overview of the science itself and the biology of arachnids. Then we will have a part two, which will go over every uh, every extent and extinct order we know of. So you'll know every arachnid of service. Most of them are tropical, so quite hard to see. In, uh, but you will, know the, you will know about the most common arachnids, like spiders, for example. <laughs> After that, I think we'll do uh, probably 10 to 15 minutes of uh, a break, because it's uh, quite dense. And fi finally, the last part, Oh, um, the last part will be the second half of part two and part three, which is arachnids and humans, and uh, a short conclusion. So we'll see uh, the about some things about arachnophobia, what are arachnids useful for, and their conservation. So now we are going to start. And uh, again, thank you for being here. I see quite a lot of people. It's very nice. So a little warning. Uh, if some of you here are afraid of spiders, we will have quite a, quite a, a lot of spider uh, pictures, um, especially in the middle and uh, maybe at the end. Thank you for the screenshot, Carlin. So this is a simple warning. Also, most of the other arachnids look like spiders, even if they are not. So you could uh, this can also trigger some some people. And don't forget that there are you will see that uh, the vast majority of them are harmless to humans, and uh, some of them actually make uh, great pets. And uh, thanks uh, one of my friends for is here for the especially beautiful drawing. <laughs> now for part one. What is arachnology? So as I said, it is a, a small subsection of zoology. <laughs> which is dedicated to the study of the arachnids and everything about their ecology, compartments, uh, every aspect of, uh, of uh, the arachnids. It is divided into uh, some other disciplines, sub-disciplines, for mites, spiders, and scorpions, for example, for the main ones. What does arachnid mean? It comes from the Greek arachne, um, 
I don't know how to say it in Greek, but uh, here you go, Arachne, which is referring to the Roman myth of Arachne, uh, uh, a tapestry weaver who challenged Athena, and uh, well, she challenged the god, so obviously she lost, and was turned into a spider, the first spider. No, when is Arachnology? So, <laughs> yeah, Roman stole as always. So it's actually quite uh, an old, uh, an old science. As you can see, it starts in the 16th centuries with uh, a monography, which is a big, uh, a big book of uh, a big description uh, by a Swedish uh, scientist, which was published one year before the very well-known Systema Naturae by uh, Linus. Uh, since the 60s, there has been a lot of arachnological society, which uh, are uh, groups of uh, researchers in the subject. And if you are interested, there are some uh, very big names in this discipline, with uh, most of them being Europeans. But uh, there are also uh, more and more American scientists in, the, in other parts of the world, like Norman Platnik, which is sadly deceased uh, this year, who was a, a great, great uh, araneologist. And also Lorenzo Prenzini, for example, who is a great scorpionologist. And here are some uh, quite uh, old illustrations, which, as you can see, are they were already taken pretty seriously. They are already quite detailed and uh, beautifully painted. Now, who or what are arachnids? As you can see, I've um, yeah, Christine Ola is a, is a, is also a French researcher. It's a, she's really great. And as you can see, uh, I've uh, put some arachnids here, which you probably already know. For example, the ticks and the daddy long legs, or harvestmen. So these are the common arachnids, scorpions, spiders. But there are also a lot of smaller orders, which most people don't know of. Most of them, actually, uh, the vast majority of them are tropical. Some are very tiny, like this tree. And some only live in the, mostly live in deserts. And we will go over each of them. So what are not arachnids? Everything you can see here, except of course a big spider in the middle, are not arachnids. Crab is crab, obviously. You can see an insect, the columbolas, um, tiny uh, insect-like uh, animals, myriapods, uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, this is known as an arachnid, but uh, I'm not pretty sure. I like a few legs. And uh, the, the Xiphosira, the horseshoe crab, well, they could be arachnids, but there's a lot of research going on. And uh, would lose our crustaceans. So, what is an arachnid? Well, here's some anatomy. Of course, I won't use <laughs> this kind of terms in the future. So, don't think about that. But the most bas the basics for arachnids anatomy are uh, having a body in two parts and having eight legs. One, two, three, four times two. And then those two smaller appendages which are called pedipalps. Pedipalps are, as you, you will see, they are uh, very diversified in uh, every arachnid. <laughs> and uh, here are the Caliceri, which is actually the main descript the main um, how to say it, uh, the main thing that makes an arachnid uh, an arachnid. And as you can see, there are different forms. Uh, you will understand more about it in the future. No arachnids can fly, except maybe some spider, which are able to float in the air, uh, which is pretty cool. So now for some anatomy, internal uh, anatomy. Yeah, flying spiders. But, uh, I will. I, I think I have an example next. <laughs> so, as as all arthropods, they have an exoskeleton and um, articulated parts. So they need to molt to grow, like insects. They breathe through spiracles or through lungs. Here is the lung of a spider, and uh, maybe even through the skin, cutaneous for the smaller arachnids. And almost all of them are uh, predators. They, they eat meat and other insects. So I won't go over everything here, but as you can see, there's uh, the venom gland, uh, the gang nervous ganglion, eight legs, and the circulatory system. So typical arachnid anatomy here. Of course, seal glands for spiders also. 
Yeah, don't mistake them for grapes. I, I don't recommend the, the taste. No, for some evolution. Arachnids are very, very old creatures. Some of you may know about these creatures, which are from the Cumbrian, about 500 million years ago. Actually, we can trace back the first, uh, yeah, it's really a fascinating period. We can trace back the first arachnid like arthropods from this period which is Sanctacaris, because uh, you, you can, uh, we can tell this because they have a small chelicerae. So not really arachnids, but uh, truly their ancestor. We are quite sure that, as you can see them here, small pincers like uh, appendages. And we will go over fossils for each order. Uh, I have a, a few uh, pictures of fossils, which are, um, we can find a lot of fossil arachnids. It's quite impressive. Yeah, the illustrations are awesome. They are from this guy on Twitter. He makes uh, paleontology stuff, arthropod stuff. It's uh, fascinating. So here you have what I said in a uh, in more complete uh, timetable, uh, stratigraphic uh, time scale. So the first calitaris is what I, uh, I spoke about before. And uh, then spiders appear in the Carboniferous. The Carboniferous is a very important period in their evolution. They are one of the first terrestrial animals, um, which is quite big. And as you can see, the first uh, vertebrates um, actually appears uh, very uh, a lot of time after after first arthropods, and uh, it's uh, quite impressive. Um, what else? It's mostly about spiders. You can see. And I have uh, put, uh, in, in most slides, I've put my sources directly uh, below it. Uh, this book I used a lot for this presentation. It has uh, a lot of uh, fossil pictures. It's quite amazing, too. And the Wikipedia is very rich in information, also. Now for some systematics, because I know a lot of you here love uh, systematics. Uh, thank you, uh, Ibel. I was uh, worried about that. So I did uh, some uh, some drawings to replace uh, some animals for you. So here we have all animals, metazoa. You can find uh, jellyfish and sponges. In uh, this stuff, you can find us. So vertebrates, fish, mammals, primates, human. And uh, about here, you can find uh, the arthropods. And I extended the arthropod tree, so this is a developed, a developed uh, phylogeny. So you have all arthropods here. And the arachnids are only a tiny part of them, with the other arthropods being uh, insects, um, crustaceans, which are very diverse also, and uh, myriapods. Plus the other stuff like, uh, oops, like uh, the velvet worm and tardigrades, which we all, which we all love. I mean, who doesn't love a tardigrade? For some, uh, for some anatomy, um, here are insects, crustaceans, and arachnids. With, uh, as you can see, the colored parts are, um, are parallelous. Uh, to say it, are the same, about the same in uh, each of those animals. But uh, you can see the, you can see the corresponding body parts. So the head, which is fused with um, the, rest of the, ab re the rest of the thorax in arachnids. And this is schematized in these pictures. So as you can see, here are the, what we call the ox gene, which um, I uh, gave a definition here, which uh, determine re determines region of the body plan of an animals. And they are very important to understand the evolution of, of arthropods. So as you can see, carisserates, well, uh, spiders and other arachnids are in two parts and have the tiny chelicera, which is uh, unlike um, all the other arthropods, with, which, which have, for example, antennas. And the uh, crustaceans are a mess. Uh, too much stuff. Really, uh, too much. So that's why I like uh, arachnids. They have quite a simple anatomy. Um, now we have, a, we have a more detailed tree of arachnids. This one is uh, quite old, but you can see uh, most of them here. It's just to, to show you, there is also uh, 
some uh, evolution included with uh, the diversity which spiked around the Cambrian uh, shortly after. And this is a more recent tree. And as you can see, all the arachnids here, yeah. uh, as you can see, this tree, which dates from uh, 2019, includes the uh, also crab into arachnids. Um, you, you will see the, the story here. It's, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the validity of it. Well, I, I'm not, uh, I don't have the level to, crit to, have, to criticize it, but uh, we, it needs a lot of, uh, a lot of work, but also crab could be arachnids. All four species. Now for some diversity, some numbers. So we know of uh, more than uh, about 2 million species, which are described, known by science, and about, uh, well, more than uh, 100,000 of them are arachnids, which is compared to 70,000 vertebrate species, including uh, mammals and fish, reptiles, amphibians, uh, all this stuff. So uh, it's an incredible diversity. Um, it's uh, understandable because most arachnids are very small, like uh, mites and most spiders. And it is estimated that there are 1 million species of arachnids actually, but uh, we won't know about that. Uh, <laughs> we don't know about that yet. So it means that about 6% of all described species are spiders or mites, as you can see on here. And uh, some great websites to know about uh, the diversity of life uh, here. No, um, the first uh, the first spider pick, and uh, it's uh, it's a big one. So for the range of size, we'll go uh, first for the bigger arachnids, the biggest arachnids we know of. You have the largest spider here, actually largest by mass, the largest arachnid by mass. By mass, um, it lies in uh, tropical America, and it's called also called the bird eater spider. Doesn't eat uh, doesn't eat a much <laughs> lot of birds, but uh, a big predator nonetheless. And here you have a big big wing spider, which is uh, also coming from Central and South America, well mostly from Mexico. Uh, as you can see, a lot of my picks uh, came straight from uh, iNaturalists, but um, when I I included uh, a lot of uh, sources when I could when I had the, the space. So the bigger arachnids are mostly found in uh, tropical countries also. This is uh, about the longest scorpion in the world, which is from uh, East, um, East Africa. It's actually armless, by the way. All of them were armless, pretty much. Oops. And uh, it's quite a gentle giant. There is also big, big scorpions in, the, in the Central Africa and um, Southeast Asia. Now for the smaller arachnids, one of the smallest, uh, the, about the smallest animals on Earth. Well, actually, most spiders and most uh, mites are tiny, and which are the majority of arachnids. It means that there can be uh, a lot of parasites for plants and animals, and uh, some uh, amoebas, for example, are, are bigger than these creatures. This is the smallest spider, which, is, which has a cute name, Patudiga, and uh, this is one of the smallest mites it's actually two times as large as the average animal cell with uh, 79 micrometers. So we also have a great idea of uh, the extinct diversity of arachnids because we have a ton of fossils, as you will, as you will see, um, with, uh, coming from a few places in, in the world, mostly umber. And there are four extinct order of arachnids which are only known through fossils. We will go over them uh, quite quickly because we don't know a lot. Uh, there is a ton of uh, uncertainties yet, but as you can see, uh, we also have great fossils. So everyone can see this is a spider, a scorpions, and these are mites and pseudoscorpions. No, uh, for the, the first part of part two. <laughs> Um, we will go over every arachnid which, which are known, but I decided at the end to exclude uh, the horseshoe crab because, um, well, because I don't know uh, a lot about them, and I had to, I would have to do a, a ton more research. Oops, sorry for the pop up. Uh, there. 
Uh, I hope you don't see uh, the pop-up that I just made on my screen. No, we didn't. It's okay. Oh. Go nice, on. thank you. Okay. So, um, and here, are two, the Akari are separated in two orders, but uh, I will see uh, them as, as one. Yeah. Incredibly tiny spiders. Yeah. Okay. So, the Akari, or mites, um, also ticks. So, for the first slides, I will put uh, pics about the, the anatomy. Uh, what made a, a, an Akari uh, what it is? Uh, sometimes it is a hard vocabulary, but uh, I um, mostly put the simpler things. And I put also uh, some schematics to understand the anatomy. So, as you can see, an Akari is quite weird because it has uh, mouth, mouth parts and uh, a big uh, a body in one part, a big globular body. So. <laughs> So next next slides are the distribution, and as you can see, I simply put a, a totally colored map of the world because Akarias are everywhere, basically everywhere, uh, mm -hmm. even of course uh, including on us, and uh, in the in salt water, fresh water, not that much in the ocean, not really, mostly in uh, in the shores, so at least water isn't colored, but uh, everywhere else. The third slides are about the ecology. So in arachnids, I couldn't fit uh, a lot because they, are, they occupy every conceivable niches and mostly as pests and for humans and parasites. They are big users of foresy, which means to travel using another animal. And then one mm -hmm. of the most successful of all invertebrates. And also there are different ecology for every life cycle and uh, a body shape that can become uh, very strange. So it's impossible to, to see uh, a lot of things in, in one slide. So this is, for example, um, Akari, so mites that feed on the blood of another mite. So you could say it's hyperparasitism. And this is one of the weirdest things I've ever, I've ever read about. It's a cartoon of what is called physiogastrism, which means that brothers and sisters breed with themselves in the body of uh, their mother. They don't even they don't even uh, get uh, they don't even get to to be born. They don't even get to be born, and yet they um, reproduce with each other. I'm not sure how it has perdured through evolution, but it is a known fact that some Akari are using this mean of reproduction. Absolutely not. The fourth slide will be about the evolution, so there is not that much to say, except that I um, I put uh, the species, uh, the extinct species and the extant species, which means the species are actually alive today, that we know of. I also put the uh, temporal range with the um, the most ancient uh, uh, fossils we know of. So order vision, pretty dimensions, uh, not even terrestrial plants at this time. And I also put uh, the best fossil picture that I could find, mostly in number or uh, in rocks. This is the oldest uh, Akari we know of. It is a cut through rod, you can see the body shape. And this is a fossil of a mite on another insect. And uh, finally, for the last slides of every arachnid, I put well uh, basically everything I had. So uh, every the, the best picture I could find of uh, the the design, the order we speak about. So for Akari, I put uh, the weird the weirdest and the biggest. This is an enormous velvet mite. <laughs> this one I sorry I couldn't find. It was on Twitter. So these tiny mites are actually living in the muscles inside the inside the mollusks. And here is an insect body with two different mites, two different species feeding on them. This one lives on humans. In, it lives in, the, in our eyebrows for not everyone, but uh, a lot of people. And this species is, uh, is, uh, is stuck to the end of the leg of an ant. So it replaces the foot of an ant. 
And as you can see, it uh, it literally replaces the foot. This is a beneficial. Um, uh, it is it is a case of common cellism. And uh, this was uh, the mites. Only in a few slides. Yeah, it replaced the foot of the ant. The feet, sorry. And uh, now for the spiders, we will have the same uh, the same plan for each order. So five slides, uh, or less five slides or less uh, for the extinct orders. So spiders, same uh, quite typical anatomy, eight legs and the famous fangs. Um, you can see them here, full of muscles and the venom gland. Spiders are special because they are also spinnerets to spin silk. And the males have uh, bulbous pedipalps, which are used to, to reproduce. They are used to transfer sperm. So sometimes I use the map from my naturalist when I don't have uh, over kind of data. Spiders are found um, everywhere on, uh, on Earth. Um, even in Arctic uh, countries, not in Antarctica. And there are only one species of spiders which uh, live totally inside fresh water, which is found in, uh, in Europe and uh, um, mostly in Europe, Argenoeta aquatica. For their ecology, uh, all spiders except one are predaceous, except uh, Bagheera kiplingi, which has made the news uh, some time ago because it is able to eat the, the what is called Beltian bodies of an acacia, so protein-rich uh, leaf-like uh, appendage of the, on the leaf of acacia. There are exceptional predators, very important to the ecosystems, and um, they eat pretty much anything that is smaller or even bigger than them. So this is, for example, a mimetic spider, which is eating its main prey. Also impossible to do them with this in a few slides, by the way. And uh, as you can see, um, a male uh, sexual dimorphism can be enormous. This is a tiny, tiny male on the enormous female. Here is the the uh, a view of um, well, the view of a jumping spider, which is almost 360 degrees. And this is the web of um, of a nugger faced spider. Which is actually like uh, exactly like um, a fisherman's net. For the evolution, we know spider from the Carboniferous, as I said, which was uh, a time of uh, enormous uh, forests when they diversified the most. We know about uh, more than one thousand extinct species, which is quite impressive, and we have exceptional fossils of spiders, some quite big, but most very very tiny. As you can see, ex there are very old, very old fossils for some of them, and they look exactly what uh, what uh, our modern spiders look like. So sorry for the anecdotophobics because here comes the uh, enormous spider gallery. I tried to put the weirdest spiders that I could find, and I will go over some of the in interesting ones. <laughs> So these are the very well-known peacock spiders from Australia. This one is literally a ball, uh, nothing else to say, just a, a ball. This one is quite interesting. Those are the Lephistidae, uh, primitive spiders with, I don't know if you can see it, but they have a segmented abdomen, which is a primitive character in, the, um, in spiders. Yeah, this, this one is called the pelican spiders. It's incredible. It mainly feeds on um, over spiders, and it has an extremely uh, high, extremely long head, which protrudes uh, <laughs> up to the sky. So it has enormous fangs. And uh, literally flat spiders. And this one has no eyes. It's a subterranean species, so no eyes. Simply don't need them. And some other stuff. If you have any questions about the pictures, I uh, can give you the names. Couldn't fit here, couldn't fit the names here, but I can totally uh, find them for you. Yeah, some are exceptionally great at camouflaging and mimicking. Okay. No, for the third order, one of my favorites, the whip spiders. Well, they look to they look totally sick, uh, monstrous, but they are actually. Um, totally harmless. 
you can see they have a very characteristic anatomy. So I won't uh, stay long on this slide. Very tiny eyes and uh, some species of big things which have no venom. <laughs> I'm happy I can see already people are being converted. As you can see, we spiders are, can be found in uh, North America, mostly in tropical America, also Indonesia and some in Africa. Uh, France and Europe is colored because of fossils, but they are known actually in Europe, except tiny species in uh, Turkey and Greece. Uh, mm -hmm. There is even one spider, which one witch spider, which has been found in Italy, so mm -hmm. no one is safe. And um, it's uh, mo all of them are predators. Oh, forgot to tell you, some slides have uh, a vid some slide has a f video footage on them, like this one. If it works, uh, here we here you go. Enjoy. Sorry for the noise. Enjoy the footage. As you can see, they eat um, quite a lot of different stuff, even uh, frogs, for example. Sorry, Dr. Frog. And um, they can be found underneath barks and uh, in caves. As you can see, they use their, their very thin appendages to detect prey and then strike very quickly. Uh, well, uh, it's a dead watch, so no need to be quick, but uh, they grapple their prey and um, go for, just go for it. Next slide. So, same, uh, we have a few fossils, amber and in rock. Uh, we have a few reconstitution of what they looked like a million years ago. And, uh, well, since there are no venom, the prey is left alive to be eaten by... Uh, treacherous fangs, so, well, I don't want to be an insect that is eaten by an oblipigid, that's for sure. So we know a few extinct species, um, and know for more pics about them. Um, this guy is, uh, is an expert on oblipigid keeper, he's on Twitter, if you want. Uh, he has a ton of very impressive pics, and uh, he, kept, he kept uh, a lot of species. So these are African species, for example. This uh, also. And this one is a neuropen uh, with spider, uh, a blind, tiny creature, not as big as those ones. And this one is a North American species, if I remember correctly, Frinus, uh, of the genus Frinus, this one too. So you can find them in desert environment also. No, for the, uh, the, the well-known harvestmen, which, are, which can be um, mistaken for other creatures of the same name. Uh, actually, a ton of bugs have the name Dayden Longlegs. Not sure why, but uh, <laughs> the common names, right? Like mites, they have a, a body in uh, one main part, and they are known because of their very slender legs. Also, they are one of the only arachnids with actual penises. And uh, the females have an ovipositor, so it's very unique for that too. And they have a very long clessere to grab food uh, on, the, on the soil. Same as uh, spiders, they are found pretty much everywhere, but not as diverse. This is also iNaturalist data, so citizen science. So they are actually a lot in Africa and uh, over in Siberia, but it's no people live there, so... Australia too, so they are not represented. And about their ecology, it's actually quite interesting. They have chemical defenses coming from the other poles. Some species have very long pedipalps, which are pincer-like. Uh, this one is uh, pretty crazy. This is a <laughs> baby of a man. Um, here is a reproduction. Some are quite flat. Quite funny uh, looking, and of course there are a ton in Europe, and some are um, big predators. This one is feeding, is feeding on a big, uh, big centipede. They have no venom, no silk, and uh, they can easily lose legs to um, to escape predators. We know about twenty extinct fossils. They are also extremely old uh, arachnids, 
And as you can see, uh, this one is the most is the oldest fossil. It is a two-dimensional cut into rock. And uh, this one is, uh, well, actually, it has very impressive eyes. F also found in amber fossils. Now for some pics. As you can see, in tropical ecosystems, they can get quite crazy, like the famous bunny of Asmans, which is uh, quite famous on the internet. Some, uh, some species from South America, and uh, this crazy looking, uh, probably from New Zealand, uh, crazy looking um, Opilionis, which has very, very long calisari and tiny penny pulps. Also, some armored species and the extremely weird um, Opilio acarida, which are extremely tiny and look like mites. So, Opilio acarida. Gonna get my pointer. Okay. And uh, I don't even know what it looks like, but it's pretty scary. <laughs> um, for, the, for another order, which is extremely poorly known, so it will go over uh, even even uh, more quickly. The palpigrelli or microbe scorpions. So those are one of the tiny soil arachnids, so tiny predators, very important for the ecosystems too. We don't know a lot. Uh, don't they don't even have eyes, but are very uh, sensitive, as you can see from all these uh, funny looking, uh, funny looking. Uh, so are quite airy. It's uh, actually the ears are important for their ecology. They can be found uh, in some parts of the world, mostly tropical countries. Also, some alive in caves in Europe. And um, uh, for the ecology, from from what we know, um, most of it are condensed in one article. And uh, as you can see here, this is a pieces of dirt, so they are like a, a millimeter long, three millimeters maximum. So it's it's so tiny it could even uh, walk on water. But um, quite interesting nonetheless. And of course we have fossils. We always have, have fossils of every order. It's quite impressive. It means that most of our diversity was actually in the past. And we know about a hundred species. So as you can see, uh, we can easily recogni recognize them in uh, mostly in number. Some of you may know about the pseudoscorpions or book scorpions. You may have found them uh, while looking at, um, at tree bark, for example. They are very tiny, about the size of my red dot, but uh, quite mobile. So um, some people uh, find them in the wild. They look a lot like scorpions, but without uh, the tail. And uh, some, uh, most species have no venom. But some are able, of, are able to produce venom from the tip of the, of the claws, and some are able to produce silk from the calisari. So nothing like spiders, but they have uh, the best of both worlds. Uh, they can be found pretty much everywhere. Also, uh, if you search through, if you search under rock, for example, you can find them. I found uh, quite a few species over the time, but they are very discreet. And they're also very cute in their behavior. Because uh, like most arachnids, <laughs> smaller ones are scary, yeah. When you zoom, when you zoom, they look like aliens. So like most arachnids, they are very caring mothers, which keeps the eggs and the babies uh, close to them. Pseudoscorpions are known to form small families, uh, which live on their, their, their silk nest, as you can see. We have a molted in individual here, uh, a baby, Two babies, three adults, and they hunt together. They are they are well known for being foretic. So as you can see in the two on these two pictures, they grab into flies and uh, beetles, and um, use them to to move uh, quickly uh, in the rainforest. So as you can see, this one is also living uh, with mites and a beetle, so it can become uh, quite complicated. Uh, <laughs> quite complicated uh, a way uh, of moving. So they are known to be semi-social, also only predators. And for the fossils, well, we have pretty much everything we need. Uh, two examples of foresy preserved in Denver. So it was stuck in traffic, basically. 
and um, we know about 44 extinct species, uh, 3,000 uh, extant species and more. And they're also very old, so the Devonian is, uh, for some of you who are into paleontology, uh, you will know, but it's uh, right before the Carboniferous, uh, in the Devonian were the first uh, trees. So these guys are older than trees, basically, like uh, pretty much most arachnids. No trees, and uh, yet the earth was full of bugs. So for some pigs, uh, this is the biggest species in the world, uh, credit to uh, Nicola Weber on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, it only lives in a small island, and uh, I don't even know on the Atlantic, I think. If... This is the uh, usual pedoscopes about uh, this big. And um, some have, have quite interesting morphologies, as you can see, with extremely long pincers. This is probably the result of sexual selection, because this is a female and this is a male. Sexual selection has driven uh, a lot of uh, interesting morphology in arachnids. And... Um, especially in spiders, with the peacock spiders which we saw earlier, and it's also the case in, um, <laughs> in the other orders. So, we have gone um, about... Uh, we have gone... I thought we would do 45 minutes. We have done 43, so it's quite uh, a good timing. And uh, I think uh, most of you will be interested in a small break. I can... Um, I can... Uh, we can take a break for about uh, 10 minutes. I think it would be good. And then we will go uh, for um, another 45 minutes for the most, in, uh, the most interested of, uh, of everyone of you. And uh, again, thank you for being here. It's uh, very nice. So see you in uh, 10 minutes. If it's fine. And if you have any questions, I will be here and to, to, to respond uh, in vocal or um, you can uh, you can also speak uh, if you want. It should be fine if uh, everyone takes their turn. <laughs> and if you want, I could I can go also over the previous slides. So we we go back to it that uh, uh, in like ten minutes. Thank you, Doctor Frog. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, frogs are big, uh, big arachnid predators. <laughs> they are not dominating the ecosystem. There are also a lot of vertebrate predators. <laughs> okay, be right back. <laughs> So, Qualia, um, we will go. Um, the Discord pop ups uh, should be fine. Yes. Uh, arachnophobia is a complicated topic. It's uh, not well, uh, we don't know well about the origin of arachnophobia. Uh, it, could be, it could have some part in our evolution, and we can talk about it. Uh, there is a slide which talks a little about it, and we can talk about it uh, after. But uh, not that much is known. <laughs> yeah, it could be part of our evolution because uh, we could have uh, evolved to be afraid of spiders. Uh, some of them having venom, but uh, yeah, some sort of survival instinct. But I don't think there is a lot of, of argument for this theory. Because in most countries, spiders are not even noticeable. Yes, phobias are complicated. It's very complicated.
Yeah, just like Carlin said, uh, learning about them can help a lot. Uh, we'll go over which arachnids are dangerous to humans, and you will see there are only a few of them. <laughs> yes, there is a, a spider that is potentially known to keep uh, a, sprox, a frog species as a, in a symbiotic relationship. Uh, I didn't read a lot on the subject. I think it could be... Um, it's not uh, maybe it's not uh, very supported by evidence, but it could be the case. Yes, it vertebrates uh, symbiosis between vertebrates and invertebrates uh, like this. Uh, behavioral symbiosis are quite extremely rare, but it could be the case. I'm gonna find a, f a picture of it if you're interested. Uh, Of course, I'm going to put a spoiler. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, don't look there is a, a very big tarantula. <laughs> Frog is at the bottom. So rhombus, um, it is uh, f it is false that the <laughs> that the frog um, keeps parasites out out of the spider nest, and uh, the big spider offers protection to the frog. So it's all the um, this relationship could have been uh, could have evolved. Very nice censorship uh, <laughs> on the spider. I think we're gonna we are going to to go on in about uh, one minute. Bye. <laughs>
to be to be precise, of course, spiders spiders are done. So more arachnids, a lot more. And my favorite one. So, uh, some very weird uh, one to to start off the hooded tick spiders. Not spiders, not tick, but uh, they actually have a, a cool hood. Uh, this part, it goes f uh, on top of the calisore. These creatures are quite tiny, like uh, most arachnids, and they have very weird legs, um, which have uh, some specialized copulatory organs. Yeah, so they, they wear hoodies, totally. It's totally a hoodie. And um, so the male are very specialized uh, legs to, to, co to copulate. Uh, we can find them in North America and uh, South America and some fossils uh, over there, also some species in Africa. They live in caves mostly and in uh, leaf litter. <laughs> exactly. Um, they are about one centimeter and they were one of the few animals that were first discovered as fossils. And then we realized they actually uh, still exist, like the well-known uh, Selacans. So that's a very weird fish. Uh, little is known, so thank you for the absolutely fantastic uh, photographers that go to the wild to find them and take incredible pictures like this. Here is a copulatory organ and here is a hoodie. Uh, the fossils now, uh, quite recognizable, didn't change a lot. Uh, one fossil in rock also, from the very long Mason Creek uh, site. Uh, a few species extant, and also from the Carboniferous, first discovered uh, in coal mines in England. So this is pretty much, as you can see, this is pretty much all I've put, uh, not even five slides, because uh, that's pretty much all we know. Uh, there needs to be uh, a lot more research about uh, how they live and uh, what do they actually do in their environment. It could uh, actually be quite important. And um, we'll then go over the eighth order, which are schizomids. Yeah, that, that's all sadly. <laughs> I will make sure we, we know more on the, in a future presentation. So the schizomids, uh, another small order, which look a lot like the pedipalpi from before, uh, but they don't have the whip-like appendages. They are, instead, they have some kind of earth-shaped uh, appendage for some species, the males. And they have pincers like Kelisore in the mouse. And uh, usually they don't even have eyes. Uh, when, you, when you're so tiny, you don't even have eyes. Uh, it's, it's actually quite common in very, very small bugs. Found in Australia, uh, Asia, fossils in Europe, and uh, other localities, mostly from Central America. You may have uh, already seen that. Mexico is one of the most incredible countries for arachnid, uh, for arachnology. Uh, every order are found there. So I'm quite jealous of uh, my Mexican friends. Um, well, Edonia, so they don't actually see, they use other senses, like um, the chemical reception. So they feel the chemical in the air. And also, most arachnids are very sensible to vibration. So mechano, mechanoception. It's mostly about vibration. <laughs> like uh, like uh, spider sense, yeah, spiders are also very sensible to chemical uh, chemical traces, vibration. Uh, Earthbunders, earth -bunders, basically. <laughs> so schizomeda, uh, funny looking. They are also, as you can see, uh, big in legs, so they can jump. And also uh, very tiny, those are fingers. I uh, obviously, uh, well, I've uh, tried to put the, the most recent or most complete article on uh, each side. And there is also uh, some maternal care for the babies. Uh, as you can see, the fossils are also incredibly well preserved with uh, every characteristic uh, which is about to be seen, even in those uh, very weird uh, onyx fossils. These are our most recent from uh, the other arachnids, but uh, I'm pretty sure uh, when we'll find uh, all the fossils in the future. No, you were probably waiting for the scorpions, so here we go. Incredibly well known arachnids, 
uh, can get uh, very big. Most species are actually very big for arachnids. Very well known for their venomous um, venomous stinger, which is called the telson. The telson. And also their claw-like, uh, their claws, and their claw-like uh, most parts, so calicerae, which are very well developed. This, this illustration is from migal.de, which is an incredible website. Yeah, get over here. <laughs> <laughs> and there are also some uh, specialized organs which are only found in scorpions called the pectins which are used to fill the vibration on the soil and other um, chemical signatures so scorpions are found um, pretty much uh, wherever it's, it gets qu quite hot no scorpions in uh, New, New Zealand for the kiwi uh, here and uh, Actually, a lot of scorpions in Europe, um, mostly in Greece, and uh, some in France, some in, uh, in Spain, a ton in Africa, and of course, uh, a ton of them in South Africa, mostly. If anyone is South African, you have a ton of scorpions, Asia also, and uh, Central America. Yeah, there, are, there is uh, about seven species of scorpions in France. Um, all of them are harmless, except maybe uh, Butus occitanus, which can get. Uh, Quite big. I've uh, actually found some butus today while going out. Uh, going out in a park, I uh, I looked under some rock in uh, exposed uh, in soil exposed in uh, uh, soil exposed uh, soil, and uh, there was uh, butus occitanus, the babies which are hibernating. So, not a biologist. Um, all scorpions are venomous, just like spiders. Pretty much all spiders are venomous, except uh, a few. But um, uh, only a few are dangerous to humans. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Drake. Five species. The taxonomy is a nightmare, just like you said. Uh, some scorp the scorpions are the most deadly arachnids. They make the most uh, deaths every year because they can be found in human habitation. Uh, for example, it is the main reason, like in Central America, they, they are very venomous. Also in North America, we'll talk about it uh, Next. So uh, enjoy the gif uh, of a scorpion cleaning its claw. Here you have uh, the spermatophore, which is used to transfer uh, sperm from the male uh, to the female. She gets on top of it and uh, collects the sperm. It is an iconic arachnid order, and the uh, scorpion actually glow under UV, as you can see here, under uh, purple uh, blue light. Uh, maternal care is very important in scorpions. Uh, so all, every, every scorpion mother carries a baby on her back. And they also have a very elaborate uh, parade, which is called the promenade uh, A very complex mating behavior, which is uh, studied in only a few species. Um, and there is about 25 uh, scorpion species which have a very dangerous venom. So uh, only uh, a tiny percent of them. <laughs> and they are mostly nocturnal predators. Uh, not a lot of scorpions actually are active during the day. Uh, in terms of fossil, we have a very rich fossil record. 2,000 species are known today and uh, 100 are extinct. They are one of the oldest, if not the oldest, arachnid order coming from the Syrian because we, we now know that the first scorpions were aquatic and they uh, came into land. This is the oldest scorpion known, discovered in 2020. And as you can see, it has, um, the fossil is very detailed and we cannot see, uh, we can have traces of the um, respiratory system. So that's how we know they came uh, from water. And even eyes, it's uh, an incredible discovery. Now for a ton of pigs, you have uh, the tiniest species. The biggest species, you saw it earlier. And there's also the genus Pandinus. We have some very impressive scorpions that are more into crushing their prey with very strong pincers, and scorpions that are more into uh, using venom with uh, very, um, very fragile pincers, but extremely powerful venom. And of course, they're also intermediates. Some, some scorpions don't even use their tail anymore, so it becomes uh, very tiny and uh, not strong at all. And uh, some species are kept as pets. Yeah, I totally think they are aliens, clearly aliens. Um, 
I'm abso I absolutely agree, especially this one. Uh, I don't even know uh, why it looked like that. And uh, so the vast majority of species are harmless. No, this is a special slide. Uh, uh, very unique slides. This is about two tailed scorpions. Um, since scorpions are more and more common as pets, people have been breeding them a lot. So um, there are there are some uh, some discovery has been made, and there are also some anomalies that has happened in breeding. It's uh, it's they actually happen in the wild too, but they don't survive uh, because it is a disadvantage, a very big disadvantage. And uh, this is all we can find uh, a lot of scorpion individuals which have with which have two tails, and I think it's absolutely incredible. So I've put a, a special slide for you. Uh, some have been found in the wild. If you go see this link, you have a, a ton of info about it. This one actually has two stingers. Overall, it's normal. And this is not even two tails. This is a Siamese scorpion, which was bred by this guy on Facebook. Um, he's a, an incredible scorpion breeder. And he has, he has kept this individual for a very long time. It's I think it's still alive, even it is, if it has two bodies and one head. And uh, as you can see, they can even be bred like uh, normal individuals. Uh, absolutely incredible that uh, they can survive by having um, two tails. By the way, it uh, it also means that uh, they have two anuses because the anus is at the tip of the tail, right here. Um, so about here, that's uh, where they poop. Could a red scorpion happen? Well, I played a lot of Fallout, but uh, nowadays scorpion won't get that, uh, that big. Um, we know of sea scorpions, which were absolutely enormous, but they are not actually uh, actual scorpions. They are eurypterids. So red scorpions, uh, there were some very, very big scorpions, yeah, like in the Carboniferous, but uh, not two meter long, more about uh, one meter long. Uh, I could not find that much info on it, but uh, there has been some red scorpions, yes. <laughs> Still too large, yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, for what some of you may also know, uh, especially if you live in uh, in uh, some desert countries or in uh, maybe in California, uh, those are the camel spiders. They can get uh, quite large. They, are also, uh, they have also specialized organs, which are called uh, the racket organs, uh, like the like the pectin, the scorpion, they are used to feel the vibration in the ground. The most fascinating thing about camel spiders is their enormous skeletal They are uh, about mostly the same size of the head, and they are used to grab prey and, um, uh, well, uh, absolutely uh, rip them apart uh, and uh, eat uh, what is left of the prey. You can find them uh, a lot in the Western USA and in South Africa, some in tropical countries. And uh, you can actually find one species in Spain uh, for those that are interested, a uh, tiny species, but not in the rest of Europe. Only one in Spain and, uh, well, not in Alaska, obviously, it's just uh, part of the USA. And a uh, ton here. So for some ecology facts, oh, and I have a video for you. These are babies. Uh, as you can see, uh, they are also quite uh, interesting mating parrots. And they are, can get very big, so they can eat um, small vertebrates. You will see that they are known to be uh, very voracious. Yeah, quite bloody, but uh, well, it's nature. Nature for you. Mostly found in desert ecosystem and run extremely fast. Okay, so here you go. This is a... Uh, at, in the middle is a chemist spider, which is absolutely uh, decimating uh, an ant nest. It's quite painful to watch, to watch as the chemist spiders uh, eat the ant one by one. And uh, uh, I'm not sure why it uh, goes to such an extent, but uh, it doesn't last, uh, doesn't last any, any witnesses. Um, there have been... Uh, they have been found up until the Cadwain first too. And we have also some uh, extremely detailed fossils. 
By the way, do tell me if I go too quickly. Um, I think we're on time, but uh, if I miss uh, too much, um, yeah, those, ranks, those answers are totally wrecked. Um, quite horrific, to be honest. We know about, about uh, 1,000 specimens and uh, a few extinct ones, uh, like this beautiful specimen from Brazil. There is a lot of incredible uh, fossils in the crater formation of Brazil. So some pigs. Those are desert species. There is a tropical Ragodidae. This is uh, the genus Exesopus, which are extremely cute. They look like uh, desert pancakes. Uh, they are very tiny and uh, are camouflaged in the soil. And you, some of you may know this pick. It is uh, one of the, the most famous uh, cable spider pick, which was taken by American soldiers in Iraq and uh, has made, uh, was seen everywhere on the internet uh, quite a few years ago. So this is two individuals uh, pinching each other, probably because they, uh, they were bothered by the soldiers. And so the fluffy ambushers and uh, some other terrific uh, creatures. You can see the Calisoria are enormous. All about the, the jaws. Now, uh, at 11, we have my favorite uh, arachnid order, which are called the vinegar runes. Some of you may know them because they, are, they have been kept as pets. And they made uh, actually quite good pets. And uh, they look absolutely uh, terrifying. Uh, and they are harmless. No venom, but, uh, well, harmless, but they can spray acid, acetic acid, like ants, and uh, it's actually uh, pure vinegar, just like uh, the vinegar you, we use. So you could also, uh, you could also name this the salad seasoning scorpions, for the most uh, intimate of you. And um, they have tiny eyes, strong claws, and uh, very sensitive anti uniform legs. Like the whip spiders, the first pair of legs has become uh, elongated and uh, is used as, uh, like the antennas. As you re may remember, arachnids don't have antennas, unlike insects and crustaceans. So they use uh, the front pair of legs, which has evolved to, to be very sensitive. They, isola they, they also have a whip-like tail, which is used to, to feel vibration. Here you can see uh, acid spraying from the tip of the abdomen. It's when they do that, uh, when they are bothered, it smells uh, a lot like vinegar for a few seconds. It's a very strong smell. Quite funny, to be honest. You can find them uh, mostly in uh, Mexico and North America, but also a lot is in Indonesia. Well, uh, all of Russia is uh, in a pale orange because there is one species here at the tip. Uh, Right here, one a single one species, but uh, not over there in Siberia. They need hot climates, so not Alaska too, obviously. Uh, the beautiful maps come from this website, uh, an Australian uh, museum website, which has uh, incredible maps or some others. They are mostly found in the tropical and arid deserts, and also in uh, human habitation. If anyone is living in Arizona or Texas, uh, you may already have known about the uh, vinegarines. Here are some pigs. Um, this is a life cycle, so tiny baby, uh, which are often colored, and uh, male, female. This is uh, a white individual because it has just uh, molted. Uh, this is a very dead cricket. And uh, this is a tread posture, which is, uh, which is uh, made to, to hold off predators. And also there is a quite complex courtship with the with the female grappling the antenna of the male and uh, some dance sampling to set up a spermatophore for the female to take and uh, fecund themselves. And this is a, a video of mine, um, uh, a pretty impressive video of um, a vinegar and be it fed a small roach. Enjoy. Yeah, here it goes. I'm gonna put it a second time because it's quite quick. Yeah. As you can see, they mostly hunt and by uh, ambushing the prey and uh, disappearing into darkness. They are also nocturnal predators.
for the evolution also from the uh, incredibly dense forest of the Carboniferous. Um, some fossils are known from Europe uh, with about seven species extinct, uh, which I think um, most of them are being uh, illustrated here, reconstituted by, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Dunlop. So there are a few in number on this incredible fossil uh, preserved in rock. Uh, this one, less incredible, but uh, quite good too. You can easily recognize the, the vinegar run. And as you can see, they, uh, even the most ancient species actually look a lot like, uh, like uh, what we have today. Uh, there is even a fragment of, uh, of an individual which, is, uh, which seems to be extremely big, but uh, not, known is, uh, not a lot is known about it. Now for some pics. So there are only about 100 species, so they are not very diverse. But as you can see, they can take uh, some interesting colors, like this Indonesian species, or this one. This is my, uh, one of my beloved pets, uh, the one of the first uh, that I've ever, ever kept. And this is uh, the same species, but in a rare a red morph, with uh, the video uh, uh, under, under the picture. So it can, they can be red, but it's extremely rare. If you go, um, if you go into uh, Texas at night uh, and uh, escape the snakes, you can uh, find one of them, maybe. Um, pretty much like a shiny, poke a shiny Pokemon. And this is uh, the single African species. One, only one species in Africa, this is it. It looks uh, quite interesting. Now we, will, we have finished with the uh, still existing orders of arachnids. Pretty much all you can find, uh, all, every arachnids you can find on Earth. So we will go over in a few slides about the extinct orders. First, we have what are called arthropods. So there are no common names, obviously, because they are so poorly known. But uh, the same artist as before has done incredible reconstitution of these animals. So if he had not done this uh, incredible work, I probably wouldn't even have talked about them. So as you can see, spider-like creatures uh, looks very hard, uh, very robust, with some uh, distinctive characters. So the maps are very, very simplified because there is only the map where we have found the fossils from the Carboniferous. So one fossil in England, uh, pretty much uh, always in coal mines too. Another reconstitution and. Um, one of the fossils, actually this is a plastic uh, reproduction, uh, one of the fossils um, which was found. So one species, which is called Plesocero madelei. Yeah, so coal mines. Miners have made, uh, I've made some uh, cool discoveries while uh, working their ass off. Now for the uh, next extinct order, which looks uh, quite uh, alike, but uh, more is known. Those are the Phalanger tarby. Uh, there are two species. Uh, this, there are two species that has been uh, reconstituted. They look uh, a lot like spiders too. So some species, some fossils in America and more in uh, Germany and Europe. They are probably predators too, but those are only theories. We will never see them again, sadly, or or not. <laughs> you decide. So thirty-one extinct species, which is way more diverse and uh, much older too, from the Devonian. Um, uh, until the early period. For the extinct orders, I thought the earliest fossils were found too. So, next one are very are more well known, probably the most known uh, extinct arachnid, the Trigonotarbids. They have uh, a very elaborate abdomen. This is uh, quite schematic, but you can see the numerous plates and uh, um, small calisphere and robust legs. So way more fossils found in, in the same localities. Uh, as you can see, there are about uh, 173 uh, fossils. We have also some cuts from the Silurian, also one of the oldest arachnids. Um, as you can see, the body is cut in 2D, so we can even see uh, maybe a bit of organs and the uh, respiratory system. This is uh, a very impressive fossil, very detailed. And uh, they were known until the Permian. So, as some of you may know, there has been uh, 
a very big ex extinction of the Permian, and uh, they probably uh, suffered uh, from it too, and disappeared. So there are some uh, even more reconstitution, also spider-like, also terrifying and uh, very armored looking. Uh, not that big, this is uh, unlarge, probably uh, only a few centimeters long. And we are crawling around the in the ground of the Silurian with the first terrestrial plants, which uh, didn't even have uh, leaves at the time, didn't even have flower or fruit, and uh, already uh, spider-like arachnids crawling on the ground and eating uh, the first insects. Now for probably the less known uh, order of arachnids, this is a very spider-like creature called the Uraneida. Uh, pretty much looks like the other but with a, a whip tail. And also the first field producing spinnerets or spigots, so at the base of the abdomen. So three, three, thing, three fossils known from uh, America and uh, Russia. Here are the fossils. As you can see, scientists have distinguished uh, some pores, uh, well, some uh, extrusion of silk on the fossils. Also, we can see a fang here. And this is a more complete specimen with the armored body and uh, the tail. Here is, here it has been uh, scanned and reconstructed in 3D. They are known f from uh, before the Carboniferous up until the Permian II, with three species. This is also a special slide. Uh, you may have known about this uh, famous chimera act, which has made the news uh, two years ago. It, um, it's, it looks a lot like the, the previous creature, but it's actually uh, way closer to spiders. It's not a true spider, but uh, looks a lot my, like a real spider, a lot more. As you can see, I've uh, put the megalomorph, uh, the Lephistidae again with the plates plated abdomen. So this one also had a whip and a very uh, developed spinneret, uh, which uh, now we know it used to, to, make, to make silk, as you can see from here. We have a few fossils of this uh, incredible arachnid. And we don't even know yet if it was really a spider or not. So I've yeah, put the Wikipedia page on here if you're interested. It, it is uh, from the Cretaceous and uh, only known from Burmese Amber. So most of you may already know it, but I didn't uh, precise. Amber is, is fossilized tree sap. So um, a fossilized uh, secretion of tree in which uh, a ton of arthropods were uh, stuck and uh, extremely well preserved. Now we'll go into part three, which is about us, us and the arachnids. We'll start part three with arachnids as enemies, because we have a lot of examples of why arachnids are detrimental to us. Of course, the ticks, which can transmit dangerous diseases that you know of, like the Lyme disease. Akari are the most dangerous, uh, well, the most economically relevant arachnid to us, because they infect a ton of different crops, like uh, tomato plants, mostly from the family Tetranichidae. Uh, very tiny, they, they build uh, webs and plants and live in, in big colonies and eat uh, the, the sap of the plant. Because actually a ton of mites are omnivorous or herbivorous, which is very unlike the other arachnids. This one is quite disgusting, this is a human, uh, human uh, gal, or I don't think this is the right name, but uh, they live inside human skin. Uh, it is a quite a dangerous disease and uh, they get into the skin and uh, dig tunnels to produce eggs. You may also know about Varroa destructor, which is uh, a mite that attacks bees. It lives inside hives and makes extremely important damage, which participate to the uh, destruction of, uh, of bees. Uh, and then it's stuck in the adult, it looks like a small uh, red bean. And this is the famous uh, of those mites, which cause uh, allergies in a lot of people. Uh, they eat our dead skins and produce uh, a lot of, uh, of crap uh, on our bed sheets and uh, pretty much uh, everywhere in our house. Usually harmless, but some people can get allergies. And uh, a, lot of, a lot more parasites 
And sorry for the end. Uh, <laughs> What's the role of tick in eight years? Well, the first thing to say is that ticks are, are praised for a lot of mammals. A lot, a lot of uh, creatures eat them. But well, uh, like most parasites, um, mm. it's pretty much it. Um, well, they, we could also say that they control bigger animals because uh, when a big animal is sick with ticks, it will uh, eventually die and uh, it reduces their population. Now, for the interesting and uh, the dangerous arachnids, I have put the pictures of the most dangerous arachnid known to us. And the most important things to say about this slide is that there is only a few of them. We have seen that there are more than 100 species of arachnids and only a handful or a few, a few a tens, a few dozen of arachnids can be medically significant. Because first they need to be able to pierce our skin to inject venom and they, or to transmit disease. And then they need to have a venom that is strong enough to impact uh, human health, which is quite rare. It mostly evolves from big arachnids that need to be able to defend from uh, mammal prey. Or it actually uh, is uh, an unfortunate, uh, unfortunate uh, hazard. Um, in a, like the, the black widow spiders, which have an all toxic venom. The Loxoceles or violin spider, which have a necrotic venom. Uh, it is very feared, as you can see, it has a violin pattern on the head. But uh, bites are always accidental. And the left one, uh, so violin spider, and this is the, one of the death stalker scorpions from North America. This is where the most dangerous scorpion lives. As you can see, uh, only an idiot would uh, bother with. Uh, over such an animal. It has even the black tail and a very strong look. This venom is extremely toxic, so DL50 means that... Um, <laughs> DL50 means that uh, if you inject uh, 100 people with the venom at 0 0.32 milligrams per kilo, uh, half of them will, uh, will certainly die of the venom. So it's an extremely high uh, DL50. Frontrodes culturatus is from Mexico. And North America, it kills uh, a few people each year, but not as much as in North African species. Uh, every Australian known about this one, this is the funnel web spider. Uh, they, it uh, doesn't kill anyone anymore because we have a strong anti-venom, but it was a big problem before. It lives in, uh, in house, for example. Uh, this one is not praying for the sun, unfortunately. It's praying for you to get out because this is a defensive posture of the banana spider or the, uh, I don't remember it's a common name, but this is a South American species with a very dangerous venom, which can get into bananas and uh, into our continents like this. So as you can see, this is a defensive posture. Uh, you, <laughs> you, if you see this, you, you must, uh, uh, obviously you must not bother the spider and get out. Red, red, thing, red fangs, uh, white and black uh, tips. So it really means that venom is the second, um, the second solution, and that the main thing is uh, is to scare the predator off. So here you go. Those are really the most dangerous arachnids, and they are no more. So vast majority are uh, not a concern at all to to us. And there's a good uh, Wikipedia article on the subject too. Of course, arachnids also are extremely beneficial to us. Um, some people eat them. I'm not sure about uh, the caloric intake that you get from a fried scorpion. Well, uh, fried everything is uh, pretty good, but uh, fried scorpion, I'm not sure. Mostly in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's actually more a cultural thing nowadays because we have, uh, well, uh, we have face food. And I don't think they serve uh, fried tarantula in uh, McDonald's and stuff. So not, not, not that much eaten into uh, nowadays, mostly for tourists. Well, that was just uh, eating them. Now for more interesting stuff, uh, what is called ecosystem services. Uh, actually, arachnids, without arachnids, we would be invaded by insects. So they, are, they control their population. Spiders are preying on millions of tons of insects each year. So thank you for, thank you spiders. 
especially mosquitoes. What is called biocontrol, so you can use mites to eat other mites like this. This predaceous mite is used to kill the the Tetronychidae, which attacks the plants. Uh, pretty effective. If you, are, if you have questions about uh, this kind of practice, I can uh, answer you because I will be uh, working on, on this kind of stuff. And also bioindicators, so which means that we can study arachnids to know about the quality of an ecosystem and how it is going. We can also, as some of you may know, we can also use spiders to know, uh, to learn new technologies especially in pharmaceutics and toxicology using the venom. This is a venom extraction via electrical currents. So the spider is electrified a tiny bit, huh? not, not that much, not to kill it. And the venom is extracted. And also biomaterials, uh, because spider silk is extremely strong. And we can use it to make uh, armored vests and extremely strong biomaterials, for example. Or even clothes, but... Uh, Looks very close. So also biophilia and education. Well, this is what we are doing right now. Learning about spiders is beneficial to you because you learn about nature in general. You learn about learning. And um, it's actually uh, quite confronting, especially about uh, arachnophobia. No, the fun part. Uh, arachnids is human culture. So, uh, <laughs> you already know that arachnids are a big part of our culture, especially spiders, of course, but some other. Uh, well, Spider-Man, you already, uh, you already saw him on the slide, so I'm going to put, put it again. So, he has been important in mythology and symbolism in uh, a lot of big cultures, especially Egyptian cultures with the scorpion, uh, deici, scorpion goddess uh, circuit. And uh, um, a lot of urban legends, uh, especially in the internet, with uh, stupid stuff like uh, uh, these spiders can uh, can kill you in one bite or something. So also uh, used in art, uh, like this well-known um, London sculpture and uh, over by the same artists. Amblypidgids have been shown in some movies, uh, like Fear Factor. Or where people had to eat them. I don't question that, but uh, well, business is business. And uh, in Harry Potter, with Ron uh, having a lot of fun with uh, 3D uh, Demon, De Demon Diadema and Blippi on his face. This was unfortunately a 3D model, and uh, also uh, bullshit was said on the, in the movie because I said it was venomous, which is not so true. Also, uh, Frodo was attacked by a spider in Lord of the Ring. Uh, pretty terrific scene. Uh, it actually uh, ter terrorized me as a kid because it was uh, well, it was not a good time, and a lot of our a lot of our movies too. Um, no, for the uh, more serious parts, oh, oh, have arachnids in nature. Well, actually, uh, this is from um, the e IUCN, so the committee that is. Uh, that studies the conservation of every single species and tell us uh, where they are, how they are in nature, if we need to help them or not. This is a spider and scorpion specialist group, which study uh, only arachnids for the UCN. And as you can see, um, of, out of every living organism, arachnids, and arachnids are the most poorly known uh, in conservation. So. Less than half a percent of species have been evaluated by the uh, IUCN. So basically, we don't know anything about the conservation. Only about 200 species are, um, have a special status. Even insects, less than a percent. But uh, it's uh, also understandable because insects are so diverse. You can compare it to, for example, vertebrates, with most species being evaluated. So there's a lot of work to do, and uh, the few guys that work here have uh, an incredible amount of work to do. So spiders need all help, basically. Uh, why? Because uh, we are um, also the one uh, threatening them, mostly by habitat destruction, with invasive species, for example rats, which are eating a lot of uh, big spiders. Climate change, of course, because when the timing of temperature change, the life cycle of uh, every creature on the ecosystem change, 
and it has negative impacts on a lot of pieces which are notable, which are, which are notable to change as quick as the temperatures. So the main thing to help is to promote uh, local ecosystems, mainly by uh, planting local flora, and to be responsible and use citizen science. Also spread knowledge about arachnids and, uh, well, fight climate change, basically. This is habitat fragmentation in the tropical forest. And this is a critically endangered species of uh, wolf spider, an extremely big wolf spider uh, coming from a single desert, from the Deserta Grande Island. Most, danger, most endangered arachnids are only known from a few species. This is endemism. So I think I have uh, finally finished and about in time. This is the last slide if you want to contact me through diverse social media uh, and some more arachnid pics for you. Um, and the final message, which is that uh, a lot of work needs to be done on the most numerous creatures of Earth, which are insects and arachnids, because we, they need uh, us and uh, we need them. So the other source of this presentation are listed below, but most are on the slides. If you have any questions about one of the, or one of the pictures I can help you, the, the slides will be shared through WeTransfer, I think, and I already send them to the, to the moderators. And uh, I the slow cooker that was presented to us many years ago, mm -hmm. many months ago, actually. So for your you can look up slow cooker recipes. You can look up slow cooker recipes. Six hours later, eight hours later. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, here are some more peacock spiders and uh, some cute uh, drawings of every arachnid orders. And, uh, well, I can see there are still a lot of people here that have uh, gone through uh, all this time. So, thank you guys. Here, I have an, <laughs> an extremely fancy uh, jumping spiders. There we go. So, I can see I have some questions. So, I will. Uh, I will answer that right now. So about climate change. Um, so I'm not sure I understand any sort of method to discover new methods, new methods of uh, conservation. Uh, well, um, as you said, the citizen science is uh, very important for this, and uh, there are also a lot of pieces of discovery and increase rates. Um, well, uh, I, I know it's a complicated topic and uh, it's going well. Uh, there are a lot of, um, of research going on in conservation. So I would say things are going well, but uh, a lot of work is still needed. And uh, about ACARI and AFID biochemistry. Um, so so if, you, if we could uh, create more specific agrochemicals, uh, well, unfortunately, I'm not a biochemist, so I can't precisely answer. But um, mm, I know there are a lot of, uh, of work on this topic also. Well, on Akari at least, so probably acid too. So yes, I think in the future, we people are still working on uh, chemical substances to fight uh, this pest. So yeah, the slide will be shared. Uh, I can send the, <laughs> the drawing of, uh, of my friend, of course. <laughs> so Yeah, <laughs> here you go. And uh, I think that's it. If you want to go back to some, uh, to a precise slide, I can do it. Otherwise, uh, we are finished. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to see you liked it. It was a very specific subject, so... <laughs> I was not sure how, how the reception would be, but it seems to be very positive. So goodbye, everyone. Have a nice uh, evening or rest of the day.